says, this is the first resurrection. Now, why would it say this is the first resurrection when we see, when we already saw the Old Testament saints get resurrected, then we see the church, the, uh, uh, the church get raptured and resurrected at the same time, and then now you say, they say, these people who died believing in Christ, they get resurrected, and then the Bible says this is the first resurrection. Why would it say that? Because you have three resurrections, and three equals what with God? One. So the three resurrections will, it will, will be the first resurrection, because the first resurrection is called the resurrection of life. Okay? These are all the people that are being resurrected to live. Okay? And it will explain itself. Okay? Um, it says, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. Okay? When the thousand years are, in, are over, then Satan will be released. But then we get in, into verse 11, and then now you're talking about the white throne judgment. And then now it says Hades and, and, uh, gave up the dead that were in it, and they all came before God to be judged after the thousand years. You understand? So even if a person would die without God in the tribulation, they have a thousand years before they actually get to stand before God and be judged. So they would spend a thousand years in Hades before they would actually get to be judged. Okay? Still, so, still hell? Huh? Because, because Hades is not hell. Hades, Hades is, it is, is what it is. It's Gita. It's a jail. Okay? It's a place to store people until judgment day. It's like jail, okay? If you've never been to jail, praise God. But they always took me to jail. <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> Turn the camera off. <laughs> Turn the camera off, okay. Is that like a uh, it's a holy place. So they would take you to jail first, okay? Then you would have your, your hearings and all that there. Then now once you're tried and if you found guilty, they said, okay, now we're going to ship you off to prison, okay? Hades is Hades. The lake of fire is the final judgment, which is hell, okay? So this is, this is how God is harvesting the world. But look, Old Testament saints get the opportunity to make it into the kingdom of God, but they have to wait on the, 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 the Christ to die, okay? Church saints... We get to make it into the kingdom of God because we place our faith in the blood of Christ yes. and we walk out our salvation. And then when the resurrection and rapture happen, we go and now we're in the kingdom. Now you have this group that kind of, you know, we were kind of Christians, we weren't Christians, we, we didn't know, we still want to party. We, now, you know, it's kind of like this, what the scripture says, it's a lukewarm type of state that you live in. Okay, so this, this resurrection and rapture happened, and many people find themselves, oh my goodness, I didn't get raptured. Why? Well, you really know why inside. You know that you really weren't, you know, you weren't really fooling God, and you really weren't fooling yourself, but you were hoping right, that God would be cool with what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I hope God accepts what I'm doing. So, you know, you're there, but now God says, okay, now proclaim your faith in me and do not take the mark, okay? And therefore, now these people that we're about, to, that we're reading about, that when he says, uh, they have come out of the great tribulation, these are the people that did not take the mark, did not, uh, uh, did not bow down to the Antichrist, and now you're talking about the third and final phase. Right now, we're waiting on the second harvest, which will change the world completely. Then the, the, uh, the process will begin. Now we can go to the book of Revelation. Okay, back to chapter 8. Yeah. 
You're in chapter 8 of Revelation? Yeah. Okay. It says uh, in verse 1, When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. Remember, the seventh seal, <coughs> the seventh trumpet, really, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a pause time. It's not really, but the first six seals always bring action. So after, on the seventh seal, the silence in heaven for about a half an hour. He says, now after this, he says, I saw seven angels stand before God, um, uh, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of the saints on the golden altar before, before the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it to the earth. And there came pearls of thunder, rumbling flashes of lightning and earthquakes. What's about to happen here? If, they're, if, they're, if they are going into, if they are taking incense and placing them on the altar in heaven and creating a cloud, what do you know is about? Christ is about to come. Okay? So the end, the end of, of chapter 7 is showing you, is Yom Kippur now, it's time to take the incense because this is the rule. Remember, all this stuff, the whole, this whole book is coming from the Old Testament. This is how at Yom Kippur, the day of forgiveness, this is how um, uh, um, uh, the priest would go in and create a cloud so that they could go in and ask, go into the Holy of Holies and ask God for forgiveness for the people's sins on Yom Kippur once a year. But before they went in, they had to create a cloud so that they wouldn't see the presence of God and fall dead. Okay? So that's how they did it. They took the incense and they put the incense down and the incense created the cloud and therefore they could go in and talk to God. Well, when Christ comes back, he says he's coming on a cloud, right? So he's coming on a cloud, not to show off, he's coming on a cloud because the sky is going to roll back. Right. And, and the men who see it will say, hide us from the face of the, of the Lamb who sits on the throne. Because now there will be no barrier, no sky uh, between man and earth to protect them from the presence of God. So they're asking the rocks to fall on them to keep us from the presence of God because the earth, like the scripture says, will one day be rolled back like a scroll. Amen. Okay? And at that time, it said men will desire to die but will not be able to. Amen. Okay? And now, we read that part, but we're going to see that part again. Okay. Um, verse 6. Then the seven angel, then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet and there came a hell uh, came hell and fire mixed with blood and it was held down upon the earth and a third of the earth was burnt up and a third of the trees were burnt up and all the green grass was burnt up. This is before the middle of the tribulation. This is before the middle of the tribulation. And I'm going to show you how once we get there, okay? And now, because remember what I'm telling you, the seals and the trumpets are different parts of the tribulation, but it, all this is going on simultaneously, okay? And I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you in a second. Okay, verse 8, it says, The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain ablaze was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea turned into blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Now, if you're a, 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 a lukewarm Christian, uh, at this time, you're like, okay, I messed up, okay? But you know the scriptures. Okay, because you're seeing things that are letting you know that, okay, we're, now we're in the middle of this. Okay, the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, a blazing like a torch, 
fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and the springs of water. Um, the name of the star was wormwood. Wormwood is the type of wood that if you throw it into the water, it, it really, it's really called bitter. So it, it makes the water bitter. It said a third of the water turned bitter and many people died from the water uh, that had become bitter. So all of this is going on. We're still not in the middle of the tribulation yet. The fourth angel, this is why people say, well, you know, the tribulation doesn't really start till the, no, there's a lot going on before the, uh, the, the, um, the middle of the tribulation. It says, the fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, and a third of them uh, turned dark, and a third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. Now why isn't that a third of everything is done? Because of Christ's death. Because the, the, the Godhead had to experience death. One part of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Son had to experience death. A third, the first child in Egypt, of, not, he, didn't, he didn't just kill the first child in Egypt. When, he, when they came out. He killed the first of everything. <laughs> he was the first cow. They just, man, I wish I was, would have been the second one more. Yeah, I mean, he killed the first of everything. So a third of everything because a third of the God had died, so a third of everything was going to experience death. A third of the Jews experienced death in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, in the Holocaust, okay? And it says here, it says, in verse 13, as I watched, I heard an angel that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the middle of the tribulation is about to start. Because of the trumpets um, blast about to be sound by the other three angels. Now we're going to get into the middle of the tribute, the third uh, of the middle of the tribulation. It said, the fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. Stop there, because now when you're talking about this star, you're not talking about a, a light falling to the sky. Who's the star that drove a third of the stars? out of heaven with him. Satan. Satan. So this star is representing Satan himself. He's falling because something's going to happen at this time. So it says here, it says, um, the star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. Okay? So this star falls out of heaven. I want you to go over to Revelation chapter 12 so we can confirm this. Chapter 12, verse 7. Now, if you read right before in verse 6, it says, The woman, uh, the woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. That's the nation of Israel. So in the middle of the tribulation, what does God do? He hides the people of Israel. He gives them a place where they can go and hide because now the Antichrist is mad because he's bringing war against them and the war is going to last for three and a half years or for the whole three years. Okay? So now he's given the Jews a place to run. But, and they're going to hide for how long? 1,260 days, which is three and a half years, okay? So now, they're hiding, but then look what happens in heaven. It says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was harrowed down that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled down to the earth and, and his angels with him. 
Then I heard a loud voice in heaven says, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. But now Satan has been finally thrown down to the earth. Where does he exist now? He is the prince of the power of the air. air. Right. That's why when Daniel prayed, there was a battle going on to get Daniel's prayer from here to there. Okay, 21 days. So his battles are going on, right? And then even in this chapter, he still he was called the accuser. And he's still the accuser until he gets thrown down. He's still the accuser. So he's stuck on earth. After the three and after those three and a half years, he's here down to the earth. He's stuck now. And now it says he's very angry because he knows he has very little time left. Now you see this same thing happening from chapter 12 because remember, Revelation is like the four Gospels. It's telling you the same story from different vantage points so that he, it can include everything that's going on. Because like the Gospels, there's some things that aren't in Matthew that are in Mark. There's some things that are in Luke that aren't in John. But that, that you have four, four, now you get the whole story because you get all vantage points. That's what Revelation is done, does. It tells you the seals, then it'll tell you the trumpets, then it gets to chapter 12 and it tells a completely different story. But it's all the same period, but I'm giving you all the vantage points so you don't miss anything. Okay? Good word. Okay. Praise God. Okay, let's go back to chapter 9. Because I got 10 minutes of doing good. Praise God. It says, The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. Remember, he's cast down. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. Where he when he opened the abyss, smoke rose up from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. So hell is opened at this time. And now it says, and it says, and out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth and were given, was given power, that of a scorpion of the earth. And they were told not to harm the grass or the earth or the plants, or the trees, but only those who did not have the seal of God on their forehead. Okay? Because who does he seal right before this? The 144,000. Remember he says, seal the 144,000, because what? I'm going to bring them up. And anyone else who is, is, is maintaining the name of Christ is also going to be brought up. <clears throat> They're going to escape most of this tribulation time. But th there's a lot that's going on here. Here we go. Um, praise God. And it says, um, they were told not to harm the grass or the earth or the plants or the trees, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their forehead. They were not, uh, they were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. This is because they took the mark. This is God's vengeance on those who are taking the mark and bowing down to Satan. During those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. So this is the punishment of God. Death here takes a five-month break. You can't die even if you want to, okay? I mean, you, you're, you're in the, this, is the, this is the middle of the tribulation. But who's not being harmed? Those who don't have the mark, because remember, those who do have the mark, it also said in the previous that boils would right. break out of, on them, right. on their skin. And it says, so they're, they're being punished for taking this mark. Because they've been warned. We won't, but we won't get to that till chapter 14 as, as we see the, the story from another vantage point when you see angels flying in the sky warning people, do not take the mark. Right. 